All right, so I think we have a pretty decent appreciation of renal anatomy. We know how the kidney is structured. Now we just need to take a look at some of the finer details. We started talking about the nephron, which I kind of drew right here, and we said this is the functional unit of filtration and collection in the kidney. So let's start off with the very beginning of the nephron. The first part of the nephron is called the glomerulus. It receives branches that come off the renal artery. You see a branch going that away. There's a branch going this away. And just like any artery, it branches off into arterioles. And it's an arterial that comes up first to meet the glomerulus. So if we look down here, we're going to have something that came off of the renal artery that's an arterial. So I'll write arterial right here. And we actually further specify this. We call this the afferent arterial. Afferent meaning going towards. And so this is the afferent arterial or the arterial that's going towards the glomerulus. The glomerulus then is this really loopy structure. There's a lot of spinning that goes on here and then we branch off again. And this gives us the same arterial, you know, this is the same vessel we just started off with, so we're going this way and spinning around and coming out as one single vessel. But we call this part of it the efferent arterial. Efferent meaning that we have left the glomerulus. And that, of course, leaves this ball-like structure over here that's going to be known as the glomerulus. Now, the thing about the glomerulus, it's really interesting. It's the main site for filtration, where we take blood that came in from the renal artery, and we push out a whole bunch of fluid that we're then going to take out some ions and some water and some waste, and we'll get rid of the waste or the extra ions. The glomerulus is where we take blood and turn it into filtrate and let the rest of the blood flow on. So this efferent arterial is going to turn into a capillary, and then it's going to go into venules and then collect back and come out as the renal vein. We'll talk about that in a later video when I talk about other parts of the nephron. The glomerulus, though, just leaks out fluid, and it needs to be caught somewhere. That fluid that leaks out is caught in a capsule that's kind of hugging the glomerulus right here. So I'm going to draw it like that, and it kind of keeps going this way. This is going to continue on to the rest of our nephron. But this thing right here, it's a capsule. And actually, it has a name. It's named after a British scientist, Dr. Bowman. So we call this Bowman's capsule. This is Bowman's capsule. And this is where we're going to collect the filtrate, or the fluid, that comes out of the glomerulus. The inside right here is just open space, so they call it Bowman's space as well. So it's just space that's going to collect our filtrate. So at this point, you should be asking yourself, why is it that we're going to have fluid leak out here? I mean, there's all this wrapping that goes around, so we've got high pressure. But how is this different from other arterioles in our body? Why is it that we have so much leakage purposefully happening here, but it doesn't happen everywhere else in our body? So let me answer your question. And why don't we just blow up that part right here and open this window so we can take a better look. So the point where the arterial meets Bowman's capsule, there's a lot going on. Recall that when we have a vessel, I'll draw sort of half of it like that right there, and it's kind of going this away. Okay, so that's our vessel that's right here. This vessel's got a lot of good stuff, like our red blood cells, our white blood cells, platelets, some really, really big protein. So I'm going to just draw something really big right here. There's, that's a giant protein, and it's not going to leak out into our Bowman's capsule. So this stuff kind of moves along that way. Then again, we've got other things like ions. So I'm going to write sodium right there. We've also got smaller protein subunits like amino acids. I'll just write AA, and we've also got glucose in here. These are things that can leak out. So how is it they get from the arterial into Bowman's space? So our vessels, our arterioles, just like anything else in our body, they're made up of cells. And the cells that line our vessels over here, and I'll just draw a whole bunch of these guys kind of hanging out. So these guys are called endothelial cells. Each of these is an endothelial cell. So an endothelial cell is a lot like most of our eukaryotic cells. They've got a nucleus, and they've got all their organelles and stuff like that going on. I'm not going to go into that kind of detail for right now, but just recall that they're eukaryotic cells. Now, something that's special about these vessels is that they're fenestrated. Write that in parentheses, fenestrated. And if you don't know what this term means, all it means is that these vessels 
have a lot of holes. They're very holy. And so because of that, the holes allow small things like sodium and amino acids and glucose to leak through. So it's got some holes in them, you know, the way that they're sort of connected. So there are holes where these guys can kind of slip through. And actually some of these holes can allow bigger proteins to come through, but these proteins still don't because there's another added layer that sits in between these endothelial cells and the tubule. So this is sort of another membrane that's right here. I'll just kind of draw it shaded in like this. And it's not a complete barrier, it's semi-permeable, meaning some things can leak through, but this is another membrane that we call the basement membrane. This is a basement membrane. And you may have heard about this in other contexts. So the basement membrane right here helps to make sure that small things pass through. Things like sodium can get through these fenestrations and leak out. Our amino acids can do the same, and our glucose can at times as well. But these bigger proteins bounce back. They bounce back because either they can't make it through the fenestrations, or the basement membrane prevents them from leaking into Bowman's space. And then finally, we've got the tubular cells, tubular cells that make up the interaction point on the end of the Bowman's capsule. So they sort of look like this. They're pretty long cells. And the funny thing about them is that some of these guys actually hug the vessel. They hug the endothelial cells like that. And so they're sort of like these legs. This is sort of a leg-like projection. And so if you remember a doctor you might see if you've got problems with your feet is a podiatrist. And so this type of cell, we call these podocytes, right? Podo meaning foot, podocytes. And so there are some podocytes in addition to these tubular cells. There are some that are just tubule cells. Tubule cells. And another term for that is just an epithelial cell. This is an epithelial cell. Okay? And so we go from the endothelial cell to the epithelial cell. And I think I should also mention that these podocytes are a certain class of epithelial cell as well. And so these guys hug around the arteriole that sort of helps for this connection to stay close. 